Iconic San Francisco Hotel has lost 90% of its value, and it's this hotel right here, the Westin St. Francis. This is a pretty nice looking hotel. You know, it's pretty fat, great architecture, and obviously in the peak of San Francisco, it was probably always booked, right? This is like one of those really iconic hotels on like an American soil. These iconic hotels are always attracting foreign visitors, foreign tourists, foreign investors, and obviously they house a lot of our citizens as well. But now a lot of these hotels are completely empty. With San Francisco, of course, recently going to the gutter, even the Airbnb bros are honestly struggling for cash right now because the Airbnb guys are all saying they used to rent out like 90% of the time. Now they're only renting out two to three nights per month. And they're actually losing capital. And we're seeing a lot of these Airbnb units slowly flooding the Zillow market, which guess what? Nobody even wants to buy a single San Francisco condo with property prices, even in the residential sector like this one, which used to list for about $1.3 million, is now being cut down to like a little bit under 1 million bucks. And I think they probably won't sell it unless you cut down by another 200, even $300,000. And still, I don't know if people really want to live in a city which looks like this on a constant basis. Just has poop, feces, urine everywhere. Not to mention the amount of shoplifting and the amount of small business closing. You don't really wanna buy a home in a city where it's like Detroit. It's declining, there's no companies moving in, and it's completely dead. And this is why you're seeing iconic hotels like these telling the city that, hey, our building is like negative 90%. Our building isn't worth jack, and you gotta give us a lower property tax. So if you check out some of the buildings here, you do see Bay Area Hotel are selling at a similar rate to the Great Recession of 2009. It's very scary because some of those prices are so cheap you can't even get them at Black Friday, right? The owner of Trans America Pyramid, when purchased the building in 2020, is seeking a 53% reduction in its assessed price from almost $500 million to $227 million. You also have this hotel right here, the Westin Francis. They're saying that, hey, you know, we bought the building at almost 800 million. Now we're only really worth like 76 million bucks. Now at Chase Center, we're also seeing a pretty massive cut as well. And it's pretty devastating to see San Francisco's most iconic tower over here, which is this building, pretty much AKA the Empire State Building of the West, right? You know, the East Coast, you got like New York City, Empire State, but in San Francisco, you got the Trans America Pyramid Building. It's very iconic, it's very old. And anyone around the world, if they see this picture, they automatically think, oh, San Francisco, oh, America, Tech City, etc. Now, this building is actually getting a pretty fat bet of a billion dollars to transform itself. And what they're doing is they're hoping a massive luxury revamp will aid in the aerials revival. Now, probably not. Here's the thing about the whole San Francisco situation and what some investors are doing. What a lot of investors are doing is they're buying a lot of these hotels and buildings for a very cheap price and then they do like a massive luxury renovation to attract tourists and to attract companies to go to their offices but here's the thing it's not really about like the renovations or how cool you make the sky bar which honestly the sky bar the trans america building is really really awesome it's more about like the street conditions right when the street conditions always look very terrible, when you could walk outside and then get shanked or get some violence done to you in San Francisco, it's not great. When residents say they're afraid to leave at night and even leave in the day, this city is basically screwed. And there's a lot of shoplifting, right? There's thousands of cases of shoplifting every single month. We're also seeing a lot of robberies, grand theft, mass looting, but the crazy thing is the city just never really addresses the issues. The city just doesn't do anything. They don't do anything. That's the downside. I like San Francisco. I've been here pre-pandemic. It was actually a decently nice place despite all the crazy shenanigans. I actually put up with some of the shenanigans, but overall the city had a pretty good vibe because the amount of texting, the texting was huge in San Francisco back then. Now the texting is so weak with so many of these office workers who used to commute over an hour to go to San Francisco are all now leaving because nobody wants to live here. 
there's barely any stores left to really shop because those store owners are losing money. Tourism is down by like double digit percentages. I think tourism is down more than 50%. And so many parts of the downtown area, Union Square, and even the Mission used to have a lot of people walking around at night. But now nobody really wants to go, right? It used to be like people in other parts of the Bay Area go to San Francisco to party. But now nobody wants to go to San Francisco because it's so dangerous. Like, would you really walk outside at night? I've seen clips of night walking before the pandemic. And then now there's a massive stark difference of people. And nobody wants to be in such a dangerous location. So I highly doubt like a luxury renovation for the Transamerica Pyramid will bring customers back. This building is basically empty right now. It's sitting empty and whoever buys this is going to be losing money. And the reason why a lot of these iconic buildings in San Francisco are selling for dirt cheap, like office buildings selling for 60, 70% off, is because one, you can't exactly make it into a residential building. It's very expensive. It's like almost $1,000 per square feet to renovate it to a residential building. And not every building can be renovated to a residential building. And then lastly, you also have just a terrible street conditions. Oh, you buy it? Well, nobody's moving in. Everyone's moving out. Small businesses are leaving and crime is exploding like crazy. Fun fact, the Walgreens in San Francisco, it's actually the most robbed Walgreens in all of America. Is that really a place where you want to buy property and real estate? Probably not. We're also seeing a lot of people regretting their investments of Airbnb in San Francisco. San Francisco used to be a massive international tourism hub, especially for Chinese tourists. But now Chinese tourists have ranked San Francisco on the bottom of the vacation list. Nobody wants to go here. We're seeing a lot of Chinese vloggers on YouTube. They all say the same thing. The tech capital of the US looks like a third world country and I fully agree. Like seriously, go to Miami, go to Las Vegas, go somewhere else besides San Francisco. The streets just constantly look like this every single day. Do you really want to live here? Do you really want to visit here? Not really, right? So yeah, San Francisco isn't looking like this great. You know, you also have a lot of drug use, a lot of fentanyl overdose. It looks like this all the time in a lot of the downtown streets. And just really freaky stuff, right? And not to mention, you also have the federal building. They pretty much said don't even come back just work from home there's drugs there's tents and i'm surprised the city is just cool with this type of scene and it's right next door to downtown salesforce tower okay salesforce tower is like yeah we're pretty empty as well and hundreds of government employees in san francisco are told to work from home because of crazy high crime and a lot of wealthy people are also leaving and taking their money away from the city san francisco is kind of screwed the Trans-America Pyramid Building is now completely vacant, basically. I mean, sure, there's some tenants, but let's be real. We're not actually seeing a lot of new tenants coming in. And this is an extremely aggressive and expensive investment, guys. This isn't like $100, $200 million. We're talking about a billion-dollar investment of buying the building, renovating it, and then renting it out. But hey, with the street conditions looking like this, I don't know if they could actually rent it out. Because there's not even a lot of companies who even consider San Francisco as their HQ.